It would be nice if you could align things in Clip Studio Paint, and it also would be nice if someone made a tutorial for it. Uh, anyway, hello there, <laughs> I'm Tamil. I'm gonna show you overview of Clip Studio Paint 2, new feature which is Align, and I've been waiting for this for 10 years, maybe more. Actually, I don't remember for how long I've been using Clip Studio Paint at this point. Yes, I know, I'm wearing a very stupid hat. And this is even more stupid. Let's go. Let's just get into the tutorial. Go into window. This is the first thing you want to do. Open the document, go into window. And in here you're going to find align and distribute. We can see that there's a lot of buttons in here. And do I really know what they all do? Technically, yes. And technically, no. But the best part, uh, you can look at the pictures and you will know what they do based on the picture. I'm going to show you what they do exactly. And then I'm going to show you how to use it. But alignment base, like right here at the top, this is going to be the most important part because this is how the mode is going to interpret your object. So alignment object, canvas, selection area, and guide. And I'm going to go over them really quickly. I have this doodle of blue boy, orange girl, and purple girl. Totally not inspired by just looking at Pinterest for hours. And if I click them, I can do control to select each one, or you can just do this one, left shift click, uh, and then it's gonna select all of them. And in here, we're gonna see that it's doing alignment object. So let's do this. I'm gonna move this over here, and I'm gonna move the triangle girl over here. And so if we select all of this, we can distribute them evenly, which is my favorite part. We can do boop. And now they're all kind of the same exact distance from each other. But, oh wait, you can see that they are not aligned straight-wise. So it kind of looks ugly, it's not perfect. And we always strive for perfect in art, right? The orange circle, uh, her name is Bob. <laughs> you can click here. We're all lined up to Bob. And if you go top, we can see over here, it's aligned to the blue boy, whose name is also Bob, Bob Blue. And if you go into each button, it's gonna look at each object and try to kind of align it to that one object. So if you click here, you can see that it's gonna to align to Bob Blue. And if you go right, it's gonna align it to the triangle. You can see that if I select all these three objects and I distribute the middle, which means it will use the middle ground as middle for everything. So I highly recommend using the middle buttons. It's gonna start trying to put them together kind of like, like this. And it's only working for up and down. So if you wanna align it, first then you can do that and then you can do a distribute and now it's going to try to make them in a row but if you do this and you align it to canvas mode this means no matter what i do it's going to start aligning them according to our canvas so let's say i want to put all of my images right in the middle and you just do this and you just do this boom you can see that this size so you can see this size this size is pretty much the same. There is no space here. There is no space here. And this size and this size is the same. So now we just aligned all of our, <laughs> all of our images all equally across canvas, which is like the best part. I, I've been wanting to, this, to have this feature for a while now. And the same goes for aligning uh, to the top like this or to the bottom. Even if you have only one object, it's still gonna do it because it's trying to do it according to our canvas. But it sometimes gets uh, you know, a little bit glitchy if you don't have a perfect shape. So let's say, and I have this little dot, right? I have this little dot over here. And if I align it, you can see Control T. This is our bonding box. This is what Clip Studio Paint is going to use in order to kind of like move it around. So if we click align, and then we click align, you can see it's shifting, but the bounding box technically is in perfect middle for the canvas. So this is something to watch out for. Do control T to double check before um, doing alignment to make sure that your object is truly like what you think it looks like and not just like randomly trying to pick uh, things to just like align them and this one is pretty cool, selection area. This one, I haven't seen one this one before. 
from any other program to be honest maybe i'm just like missing out i'm just like too too old but uh if you do selection so like let's do selection of a square we do align to the top and now it's going to align it right where our selection is also if you think about it if you do selection on the edge of the canvas this is where it's going to be this is going to be touching uh, the bottom of the canvas so technically if you don't feel like using the canvas mode you can also do selection area if you have something already selected and then you just do boom and it's going to align it to the bottom and another thing is according to a guide so if you do control r we have our ruler and we can just uh, you know drop this ruler over here and then drop this ruler over here now we have two two rulers right here and it's affecting all of our canvas which means if we select these objects and we do according to our guide that means we can just do boom to the top and boom to the left and now all of our objects are gonna meet over here and it's not going to be affecting uh, anything else so it doesn't really care where uh, the guide is as long as there is a guide and making patterns in clip studio paint used to be kind of complicated but now uh, now that we have a line and distribute it becomes super easy so let's just make a cute pattern I'll draw something simple so that we can just practice a little bit and then make a cute pattern for one of our drawings two hours later well, there are different ways you can make a pattern, but the good part is that we have this alignment tool is that we, if we have a circle, what we want is that half a circle is going to be right here and half a circle is going to be right here and they have to align, which means this tool is going to help us align it. So if we create a guide, we can go in here and we're going to do a zero. Then what we can do is select the green little doodle we do a guide, we can align it to the center. And that's exactly what we need. And if we have the second ruler, which we're gonna push all the way to the here, and our little green, we're gonna duplicate it. So now we have two, and I can just do a line again in the middle. And this is how you make a pattern. So let's say we can create the same thing but for every other object in here and we're gonna see if it's gonna align two hours later so now that we have everything aligned which looks pretty wonky but we can add a new layer we can just right click do merge visible to a new layer go into edit register material image and in here we're gonna do pattern test which we're gonna be working on in a bit and we want to click on tiling repeat we want to save this in for example downloads and in here we're going to find if you can't find this it's going to be window and there's going to be a bunch of materials and you can click downloads for example and in here you can see pattern test so if we drop this it should in theory tile which means it's working it's working it's working it's working so now we have all these things connected and the best part is that now that we have this and in the middle, what we want to do is probably doodle just a bit more. We can go with a pencil brush, for example, and do a little bit of a sunshine. And so this is the part that is interesting because when you make a pattern, what you can do is as long as the side style, you can start changing the middle. And that's what gets the cookie going and let's do a little dinosaur in here because why not so now we have this this is our new kind of like thing and we can make a new merge visible and this is going to be our final pattern so let's go into edit register material image and let's do tiling let's do final pattern it's gonna be in that final. Never say final because you're not gonna turn in your project ever. So now we have our final pattern, which means we have our canvas and let's just draw a little character and then we can drop our pattern. That's gonna be really weird looking, but what we can do is hide this. Let's do M for selection. So I'm going to select 
this whole thingy. Now we can mask this pattern. Remove the little uh, check mark for our pattern. And now we're going to resize it. And as we resize it, it becomes little clothing, little clothing for the little guy. So we can do this, we can even rotate it. Doesn't really matter what we do with this. And this is the part where we have fun. And using our selection tool, we can add a little bit more depth to our shirt. And just like this, we have a very simple pattern shirt. And I know this is a masterpiece <laughs> of an artwork, I know. This is going to be in the Louvre gallery in every single uh, every single person is going to see this and say, wow, Tamil, you're, you're standing, you you're made yourself some uh, really nice. But honestly, if, if this was a shirt, I would buy it. I would literally wear this. But uh, point is really fun to make patterns, uh, really easy to align things when they're going to be in more beautiful kind of way. And this is the part where I leave you off. Thank you so much. You can probably download this pattern from uh, my Gumroad. I'm just going to upload this anyway to my Gumroad. Why not? I already made this pattern. So, and happy painting.